time has now begun Open your eyes and see The change in you and me Now as one Living under the sun Hear the children First of all, on behalf of Malaysia On behalf of the Ministry of Youth and Sports in Malaysia I'd like to welcome all of you for coming here today A big selamat datang or welcome In the Malaysian language Or national language it's going to be an exciting next three days where we have young leaders from not just the ASEAN countries, but also from our dialogue partners. And I'm happy to welcome all our friends from ASEAN countries, dialogue partners, to come together with us and in trying to chart the future of ASEAN. During this opening ceremony itself, we have almost 2,500 Malaysian youth leaders from our Malaysian Youth Council, our youth parliamentarians, our Padana Fellows, political leaders, young political leaders, and many, many more that are here with us this morning. It's great to note that these 300 participants from 14 countries will be part of our ASEAN Young Leaders Summit over the next three days. We've got a fantastic mix of attendees from different backgrounds, government leaders, civil society, entrepreneurs, young professionals, and this is a great indicator for the summit for us to get a unique mix of individuals together to come up with common goals. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here over the next few days to do one thing, to chart the future of ASEAN by getting youth to drive the ASEAN community. Why youth? Why young people? Why is this so important? One very important fact, 60% of the ASEAN population are below the age of 35. 60% of us in ASEAN are below the age of, of 35. We are not the future. We are the present. We are here and we're here to make decisions and to suggest where we go forward as ASEAN. That's why I chose the theme, Youth Driving the ASEAN Community, to show how important young people are to our region. Ladies and gentlemen, this, as the Master of Ceremony said, is a very, very important week for ASEAN. The ASEAN community that will be established at the end of this year represents a major milestone towards the journey of creating a truly integrated region, an integrated economic community, an integrated social community, and an integrated political and security community. The shared values that I want to talk about, it's not an exhaustive list, but the six that are up there on the screen are key ones that I believe are important for us to chart the future of ASEAN over the next few years. One, it's the value of innovation and creativity. We must strive to push our governments to continue to invest in education, to invest in technical and vocational training, to invest in science, to invest in research, so that ASEAN countries, whether they are at the forefront of economic development or they are those who are still developing, can remain competitive and the ASEAN region is seen as a region of innovation and creativity. Secondly, we need to have empathy. We need to have empathy between ASEAN countries and within our own countries to put ourselves in the place of other people. This is the best way to resolve disputes. This is the best way to avoid conflict by having empathy to understand where the other person is coming from. Third, we must have a commitment towards social justice to ensure that the gap between ASEAN countries and within our own countries are closed to ensure that marginalized communities are assisted, to ensure that no one is left behind. And this value must guide young people in trying to create an ASEAN community that is grounded on social justice. We must commit ourselves to good governance. What is ASEAN if not good governance? Respect for individuals, respect for its citizens, respect for the freedom for us to choose our future and respect for law and the rule of law. We must be a region that shows that we believe in the hallmark of good governance within our countries. We must also have a strong understanding and respect for sovereignty. We want to make sure that the young generation of ASEAN leaders understand that ASEAN works when we respect the sovereignty of each other. We do not want ASEAN to be a flashpoint for geopolitical rivalry. We don't want ASEAN to be a region where we squabble over territorial disputes. We want to ensure that we 
focus on respect of sovereignty through multilateral consensus by discussing. This is the ASEAN way. Sometimes it's slow, sometimes it takes a long time, but this is the ASEAN way that has worked for decades in ensuring that ASEAN is a zone of peace, prosperity, and progress. Ladies and gentlemen, I've spoken at length about how great ASEAN is, but it's, all, it's not all, all rosy. There are fundamental challenges that we face as an ASEAN region. And some of these challenges, again, not exhaustive, but for example, in parts of ASEAN, poverty persists, and economic growth has been accompanied by rising disparities in income and opportunities. Approximately 179 million workers, or three in five, are in vulnerable employment, and 92 million earn too little to escape poverty in ASEAN. This is just one challenge. The many, many more existing challenges that will need a fresh perspective in bringing out solutions. Which is why we, the young people, the driver of change, are here in the summit today to address problems faced by young people. Employment, cost of living, housing, poverty, education, access to sanitation, water, access to electricity. These are the issues that we need to address. All these sections, different format, different experiences and deliberations will lead to one final outcome from this AYLS that I want to be the lasting legacy of this conference, which is the ASEAN Youth Manifesto. On Saturday, when the leaders gather for the ASEAN Summit, we've been given the honour to hand over the outcome of this AYLS to the chair of ASEAN, the Prime Minister of Malaysia. The Youth Manifesto for ASEAN will be our document from the AYLS that we will be handing over to the leaders. I want it to be feasible. I want it to be concrete. I want it to be detailed recommendations that we're going to think about over the next three days. I don't want motherhood statements. I don't want, we want ASEAN to be peaceful. We want ASEAN to be, uh, to be conducive to young people. We want ASEAN to encourage entrepreneurship. That's motherhood statements. I want us to drill down. Drill down on some concrete proposals. It should be detailed. For instance, for leadership, you can suggest, as an example, an ASEAN Youth Assembly, which convenes twice a year so that young leaders can exchange ideas. For entrepreneurship, an ASEAN SME fund, just for the young entrepreneurs, where funding comes between the government and also the private sector. For volunteerism, maybe the setting up of a volunteer corps that can be deployed in times of disaster at ASEAN countries. In education and employment, maybe the teaching of English, a program in rural areas in ASEAN countries. These recommendations will be tested and challenged on Friday. We only want the best of the best to be presented to the Prime Minister of Malaysia as Chairman of ASEAN at the opening ceremony of the ASEAN Summit. Be the time. 